What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. So what I want to talk about today are um, basically just five team archetypes that you want to look out for uh, in the current VGC 2023 Regulation C metagame. So these are all going to be teams that I just took from the Portland Pastes because um, I, I feel like, you know, these are specifically teams that did well in a recent tournament. Uh, and yeah, I, I just want to make this like kind of a quick video, like give you like the spark notes on every single one of these teams and explain how they function uh, and why they're so good right now. So if you guys enjoy this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. And answer my comment question of the day, which is going to be, which one of these teams do you expect to do the best at Hartford Regionals? Because this is going to be basically my pre-Hartford Regionals team. Uh, this is what you want to look for going into that tournament if you're competing or if you're competing in any tournament, you know, going forward, basically. Uh, these are things to look out for. These are the current metagame trends. So, yeah. So, I believe the best place to start is going to be something we're all familiar with. This is going to be Jumpluff Sun. So, this team won the, uh, what's it called? The uh, Portland Regional Championships. Uh, and we've covered it a few times, which is why I want to get it out of the way first. Uh, so basically what this team does is it utilizes Eject Pack, Torkoal, and Jumpluff uh, as a lead to be able to sleep a lot of things and uh, go for uh, support moves like Encore, Tailwind, uh, and basically just shut down a lot of common leads. So why Jumpluff is so good on this team is it reaches a speed tier where it's actually able to uh, outspeed Booster Energy Iron Bundle, which Iron Bundle hits 309 speed which Jumpluff at level 50, if I can get this done level 50 real quick. At level 50, Jumpluff is able to run a non-speed boosting nature and still outspeed Iron Bundle with the Chlorophyll up. So it runs Covert Cloak to prevent fake out and stuff, uh, but it specifically Eject Pack Torkoal is nice because it makes it basically like you always get a free swap in any situation. If the opponent leads off with an Arcanine, like Safety Goggles Arcanine, which is a pretty decent way to deal with Jump Bluff, um, it's going to make it so the Torkoal immediately switches out after it sets up Sun, and you get something in like Fluttermane, or specifically Great Tusk is good into that Arcanine lead. Or alternatively, you could even lead off with Torkoal King Gambit versus Arcanine teams, and the Torkoal will get a free swap into the Jump Bluff, allowing for your King Gambit to go for like a uh, plus one a kowtow cleave while the jump bluff goes for a sleep into non you know uh safety goggles arcanine uh or just tailwind and do stuff like that jump bluff also despite having a really low special attack set is able to one shot pretty much every iron bundle with leaf storm because of the high base power and the fact that uh, iron bundle is naturally weak to that move also encore is able to shut down iron bundles that want to go for protect and try to bait out an attack jump bluff does have some pretty naturally good bulk uh, with 75 HP, 70 defense, and uh, 95 special defense. So having these tools to deal with uh, your opponent trying to play around it uh, just makes it super consistent. And the adjustment on of putting Jump Bluff onto Sun Teams over things like um, Lilligant and stuff uh, is actually basically just to deal with things that are currently quite good. For example, you know, Iron Bundle, it one-shots that. But also into Palafin, it's a pretty solid answer to deal with that Pokemon because of the bulk that uh, Jump Luff brings to the team. Ignore that. That is literally the world's most annoying alarm clock that went off because I'm recording this really early in the morning. Uh, so yeah, basically Jump Luff, very solid Pokemon. You take advantage of stuff like Choice Scarf, Great Tusk to outspeed basically everything with Tailwind up. Uh, the Chien Pao will lower everything's uh, defense stat. And Terra Flying allows you to safely go for the um choice scarf earthquakes next to this thing yeah uh it, it's a pretty solid team i mean choice specs flutter main it, it has a naturally high speed tier which allows it to um outspeed basically everything with the tailwind up and then depending on how you run the flutter main it might get an extra special attack boost with the sun up or it might get a speed boost which uh, a lot of them are going with speed boosting but i do like the special attack boosting variant because with this uh with the tailwind up you basically outspeed everything anyways so yep, that's the spark notes on that team. Let's move forward on to the next example. This is going to be snow, which I've also covered. I'm getting rid of the things that I've covered in the past at the beginning uh, before we get into stuff that I probably haven't talked about as much. So snow takes advantage of the fact that Iron Bundle has a naturally high defense stat. Um, and by investing just even a little bit into that HP stat with snow up, uh, because of the snow defense boost to specifically ice types, it makes it so Iron Bundle is a very, very difficult Pokemon to get rid of. 
Iron Bundle is also capable of running things like um, Light Clay to uh, get up its Aurora Veil very quickly uh, in front of the opponent, uh, which allows it to then take special hits and especially physical hits even better. Uh, I ran some calcs in the previous videos talking about Snow specifically, where you can see Iron Bundle is able to eat like close combats at that point, uh, which close combat is not an easy hit for this thing to take. However, uh, Nails' version does take advantage of Choice Specs Iron Bundle and Helping Hand Obama Snow uh, with, I believe it was like Max Speed, Blizzard, Helping Hand, um, and stuff. Uh, it also is the Aurora user on this team. Basically, what you do with this is you lead off with like Obama Snow Iron Bundle and just absolutely clean up with Helping Hand um, Blizzard. Or you can alternatively make a version of this where you have the... Um, you have like the uh, Aurora Veil on the Iron Bundle and then you use that Veil to make your other Pokemon much more difficult to deal with. Great Tusk basically has an Assault Vest at that point, uh, meaning that it has like the best of both worlds being the Choice Scarf variant and the Assault Vest variant. Fluttermane is able to eat physical hits much better uh, and Fluttermane is like deceptively bulky already. Uh, it, by investing a ton into the physical defense side of things, uh, it's able to eat stuff like uh, Palafin, like Jet Punch and stuff with uh, Mystic Water. So with this Veil up, you don't have to invest quite as much, or you can even double down and make it so your uh, Fluttermane eats hits that you just do not expect. Dragonite with multi-scale is a very annoying Pokemon to deal with because of the fact uh, that it not only has this multi-scale up, which halves the damage of incoming moves at full HP, but also the uh, Aurora Veil coming out from one of its partners uh, will basically make it so it's always halved. And King Gambit is obviously a very strong Pokemon just to have on this sort of team because of the natural bulk it has and its ability to deal with Pokemon that want, might want to lead off versus uh, Obama Snow like Arcanine. So yeah, quick little rundown on that. And now let's get into stuff that I haven't covered. Actually, I guess the only things I haven't really covered before are going to be the second and last, or the second to last and the last one because we're talking about Palabalance. So I have talked about Palabalance a lot on this channel. However, Palabalance is something that is, I don't know, I felt like it was so common, I've never done like a full breakdown on it. So we're gonna explain how it works here. Palabalance uses the combination of Amoongus, Palafin, Arcanine, and sometimes Tinglu. I think Tinglu is like the one that you can kind of swap around on here, but it's mainly just Amoongus, Arcanine, uh, Palafin, and it tends to have like a Fluttermane on it. So the reason this works so well is because there are a lot of parts that do well by switching. Palafin is a Pokemon that starts off very, very weak, 70 HP, or 70 attack, 72 defense, uh, 62 special defense, but simply by swapping out, here, uh, simply by swapping out, Palafin becomes Palafin Hero because of its ability, uh, zero to hero. Now, Palafin Hero is the exact opposite of Palafin. It is a menace. Look at these stats. You just saw these stats practically double. Um, it has access to one of the strongest priority moves of the game, Jet Punch. Uh, it's basically a Technician Aqua Jet. Uh, it has Wave Crash, which is Water-type Flare Blitz. Uh, it has access to tools like Taunt and Haze to deal with Dondoza matchups much better. Uh, and of course, it is just a overall bulky Pokemon. One that you don't even have to like invest into its speed to get a lot out of. Most people just like hit the attack bump um, at level 50, max out its HP, and then like put a little bit of speed in here. I've seen like spreads like this. Like go around like just like oh look at four speed palafin and yeah it, it is it is very easy to run palafin like that um it's difficult to ko uh, especially on the special side of things because of its partner ting lu which uh usually just runs like a, a super bulky set uh ruination's like a phenomenal support move but it also just lowers the uh special attack set of everything around it and on this team there's only one special attacker in Fluttermane, so as long as you're able to keep the Fluttermane off the field next to your ting lu or the ting lu off the field when your Fluttermane's on the field uh you'll be doing just fine so yeah um this team they tend to want to lead off with like palafin and like amoongus uh and then you're able to swap out palafin for arcanine which is an intimidate pokemon you're gonna be able to intimidate opposing pokemon very uh, reliably because of the high bulk access to moves like will-o-wisp and uh, the fact that it's going to be able to run safety goggles like 90% of the time. Um, and Amoongus is another Pokemon that switches like super, super easily because of the ability regenerator. Every time you swap out, Amoongus gets a third of its health. So this team makes intuitive sense. This is the team that like I would say is the most common in the metagame. This is like the team that you're going to run if you want to do consistently well into everything, but it becomes much more of a skill-based game. There's like a running joke of Pal of Balance players explaining how they lost the last match, and then in parentheses, it's like, 
their opponent got two turns of sleep and they got three because that's kind of what decides it in that matchup. So yeah, it is the standard team. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. I, I guess it's not like a dominant team. It's not like the best team that you could possibly be running. Like we're explaining every single team that's like super good right now. Not every single one. There's a ton of like archetypes, but we're explaining like the top five archetypes right now. And I would say they're all about as good as each other. Um, so yeah. Max Calibur is a very common sight on this team because there are a lot of Pokemon that are capable of being burned to shut them down, specifically Tinglu and Palafin. Sometimes with the Arcanine Terras, you know, a burn might not be the worst play into it. But Max Calibur having that ability Thermal Exchange, making it immune to fire moves and getting its attack stat raised um, every time it gets hit by a fire move, that's like also very good. And it combos well with Arcanine because you're able to intimidate Pokemon in front of you. You're able to use Tinglu to um, lower like the special attack stat of Pokemon while Max Halber might sometimes run like an Assault Vest. Clear Amulet is also like really good for preventing this thing from ever getting its stat dropped. Uh, and yeah, Arcanine will usually run Howl next to it because it boosts not only the Arcanine's uh, attack stat with Flare Blitz and Extreme Speed in its move pool, but also making the Baxcalibur get plus one attack uh, with that very powerful Glaive Rush, Ice Skull Crash, and Ice Shard. Uh, so yeah, Glaive Rush is also a really strong move with Ice Shard because the way that it works is um, until you move again, until the, the Baxcalibur moves a second time, uh, you're going to take double damage and it's guaranteed that a move will hit you. So if you go for a Glaive Rush and you don't have Protect and there is an opposing Rock type with uh, Stone Edge on the other side of the field, that Stone Edge will KO your Baxcalibur. You're taking double damage and it can't miss. Um, so yeah. So Ice Shard, because you're technically moving with priority, uh, will make it so your Baxcalibur takes reduced damage. So that is not reduced damage. You're not feeling the effects of Glaive Rush. So I think Ice Shard is, excuse me, uh, Ice Shard is basically a must on this set. Uh, so yeah, what else can I explain? I don't know. Florida Main is cleanup crew. It's mostly just moving parts. It, it, like it's it's a team that it takes a little bit to learn, but it's not like super. Uh, it's not super like hard to learn. You'll you'll get used to it. You'll go, oh, I'm gonna lead off a Palafin hero in Amoongus. Oh, they have an Arcanine that's gonna tear a grass. Let me swap in my Arcanine to like avoid a Will O Wisp, or let me swap in my Baxcalibur to avoid the burn. Now I'm going to swap in my Arcanine to go for a Howl and, you know, I'm going to go for KOs and, oh, I'm chipping everything into range of Specs, Fluttermane, Dazzling Gleam. It's it's just like a, a team that anyone can pick up and learn. It's it's very simple and um, it's it's like super skill based. So I, I like that team quite a bit. Now let's talk about the two that I haven't talked about, starting with um, Glamora Dondozo, which I think is surprising that I haven't talked about. So Glamora Dondozo works like most Dondozo teams in the fact that uh, it functions by chipping everything down into a range of like Dondozo Earthquake. That is like your win con, or maybe you get rid of the only thing that can KO Dondozo and it's a slower end game. In Regulation C, uh, Glamora Dondozo teams have adjusted to also pack Fluttermane, Iron Bundle, and Chi Yu because of how powerful they are They are on leads. Um, you know, you have the combination of a ghost type with choice specs with like a uh, Terra Ghost you to uh, lower the special defense stat of everything in front of it and then you like KO the Pokemon that would otherwise deal with Dondozo or you have stuff like Iron Bundle which would sometimes run like Encore uh, next to Chiyu to uh, get rid of like the Pokemon that would be threatening Dondozo for example a grass type is never going to be able to deal with Chiyu and Iron Bundle uh, if you have like a Wo Chen to deal with Dondozo because a lot of Wo Chen can actually deal with Dondozo surprisingly enough it's like a hard check to every tool Dondozo has uh, you just annihilate it with these two. Uh, if you have other common answers like a, I don't know, let's go with like Palafin. Palafin is usually like the answer that you'll save for the Dondozo because you're able to eat any hit from Dondozo at plus two and go for Haze in front of it, uh, prevent it from getting those stat boosts. Uh, the Freeze Dry from Iron Bundle will almost one shot uh, Palafin uh, next to Chiyu. So basically Focus Dash Chiyu, Dark Pulse plus Freeze Dry will get rid of like a Palafin uh, instantly. And the absolutely devious tool here is uh, Glamora with Mortal Spin and Toxic Debris. So by setting up uh, Toxic Spikes in the other side of the field, it's able to set up an endgame situation where even if you're able to somehow deal with the Dondozo slowly, Dondozo is so bulky that if you're poisoned, all it has to do is alternate protect and attack. Just protect, attack, protect, attack, protect, attack. Um, an Earthquake will eventually be signed that'll KO with both of your Pokemon. So yeah, 
Um, it's a very simple team to understand how to play. As a matter of fact, I like to refer to this team as the I really, really, really need points at this tournament. Um, and I really, really, really don't want to have to try as hard as a lot of people. And that's not a dig at the team. I think that this is just the sort of team that like you can pick up very easily um, and it's reliable. It's never going to be that bad because of how it's structured. I think that like this is the single most reliable team to secure points at at a tournament or to secure points with at a tournament. And, and I respect it. I think it's really good. Don Dozo has adjusted to run Terra Grass, Terra Blast on a lot of these teams though. Um, because it allows it to one-shot opposing Palafin Hero in case the opponent plays so well or like you lead off wrong versus Palafin Hero. In the end game, you can just annihilate that thing. So yeah, that's how the team works. The last one is something that I haven't covered on this channel. Um, and I actually think it's one of the best teams in the metagame right now. And this team actually won Sao Paulo Regionals. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the results. So Sao Paulo, um, page four, five. Yeah, here it is. Oh no, that's yeah, here it is. So uh Joaquin Salerno uh won the team or won the tournament with this team. Um and it's pretty cool. So the way that it works is you have an Orthworm that is a pretty reliable lead into a lot of things. Orthworm's one weakness is its special defense stat. Um how you know not able to eat hits it is, but it also doesn't want to run assault vest because you won't be able to go for shed tail, a move that not only, you know, sets up a substitute but passes it to a Pokemon coming in. There are a lot of really good substitute Pokemon on this team, but I would say the single most frustrating one to play against is Multiscale Dragonite, because by passing a substitute to Multiscale Dragonite, it makes it the following. Um, immune to status conditions. Immune to intimidate. Immune to, or it just, it doesn't take damage the first turn, but also on the follow-up turn, you have to deal with the Multiscale, so it takes probably minimum three hits to KO a Dragonite, which is already really bulky, so it's probably gonna actually be four. So yeah, like, it, it is frustrating, dude. Like, three freeze dries is what you need to KO this Dragonite. And if it Terra Normals or Terra Flyings, good luck. Uh, so yeah, and that Dragonite's able to set up in your face, which is really, really terrifying next to a, a Chen Pao. Flutterman is also a really decent partner for this Pokemon because of uh, the choice specs and the natural frailty of it. Getting a substitute up is like super nice. Uh, it's able to combo Hex with Thunder Wave that uh, you're going to want to spam with the Gyarados. And a lot of Pokemon on this team have a ground move. You have Earthquake on the Dragonite to heal the Earthworm to allow you to pass further um, Shed Tails off to Pokemon. You have Terrifier in the Earthworm, by the way, to make it so you're not uh, going to get like uh, one shot by... Uh, why am I missing the move? Uh, like Chi Yu, basically, because you're now resisting the hit. Ting Lu with also Earthquake and a Choice Band, which is terrifying uh, because Ting Lu has a decent attack set and they're usually not built that offensive, like at least in comparison to like this set, uh, which means that not only is Ting Lu going to be a strong support Pokemon by lowering the special attack set of everything around it, but it's also going to be consistently healing Earthworm uh, and dealing tons of damage to things in the field. Gyarados has Bulldoze for speed control, which will not only lower the opponent's speed stat to allow Orthworm to outspeed it and get a Shed Tail off, but also heal it in case the Orthworm is below 50% HP. And finally, we have Chen Pao with Ice Spinner, Sucker Punch, Haze, and Protect. That is your Dondoza matchup. You click Haze, and then every Pokemon on your side of the field just absolutely wails on the Dondozo. It is a very, very competent team and I I like I hate facing it on the ladder but it's so good I think I might record um a session with it uh this week but yeah I I, I mean like Orthworm is a really good Pokemon in the metagame I I think that a lot of people slept on it for a while because uh, it just took a while for someone to figure out how do you build like the optimal Orthworm team and this is basically it one two three four strong physical attackers three of which have a ground type move to heal the Orthworm and like or these Pokemon benefit heavily from having that substitute up for them. And Orthworm is just genuinely hard to KO. I think that the only reason I don't do terrible into this team is because I run Taunt Gyarados, and Taunt Gyarados is a hard check to the Orthworm. Uh, it doesn't care about body press. It doesn't care about, well, I guess like opposing Taunt Gyarados if it's faster can deal with you, but it doesn't care about like the, the Earthquake coming out from like half of these Pokemon. And it also is able to intimidate Pokemon like Dragonite and Tinglu on lead, so yeah. Um, obviously Thunderbolt from Fluttermane is like the only bad part about it, but if you deal with it well enough, you'll do fine. So yeah, uh, these were the top five teams I think you should watch out for going forward into this, uh, next bit of tournaments, NAIC, Hartford Regionals, Fresno, 
So let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.